ready for your first case? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's get started. All right. So tell me about what you see in this picture. What's your general impression of this patient? Looks like he's having a little bit of problems. Looks mm -hmm. to be in distress. Yeah, clearly in distress. Anything jumping out at what kind of distress he might be in? It's a little positional, so there might be some respiratory distress. Okay. What are your initial actions for this case? What are you thinking about doing right now, especially considering a heavy rain is falling? Probably get him into the back of the ambulance and uh, if he's able to ambulate, mm -hmm. and then do primary assessment, check his breathing and make sure his airway is patent. Okay. That's so much work there is a breathing. So, primary assessment, how would you, at this point, categorize the patient's respiratory status? Looks like he needs some support. Mm -hmm. He could use some oxygen for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, okay. Um, oxygen, so What's would you do a nasal cannula, a non rebreather Probably a non rebreather with a delayed cap refill. Okay. So you're definitely thinking that he looks like he's in distress? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and move the patient onto the stretcher. We're going to put him in the back of the ambulance. Okay. And then we're going to be thinking about taking a focus history. What sort of questions are you going to be asking this patient? Oh. Allergies to medications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he's currently taking any medications. Okay. We'll get you started with the first section there. Okay. Okay. So that gives his chief complaint. His chief complaint is that he's having some back pain. Well, as part of that, too, we could also try and get an OPQRST for his pain. Right. Okay. Right. All right. So the pain started very suddenly. That was his onset. Okay. Uh, for P, for palliation provocation, there really isn't anything that makes it better or worse. Okay. Um, for Q, the quality of the pain, he's describing this as a sort of a tearing or a ripping. All right. And what does that say? You, I see some heads nodding. So yeah. What are you thinking about tearing and ripping? Starts making you think about an, a, an aortic aneurysm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do patients with an aortic aneurysm usually describe their pain? Tearing, tearing pain, or ripping, flank pain. Okay. So that's why we're pain. thinking that. Right. Okay. Um, radiation. He's saying that it's radiating kind of into between his shoulder blades. Severity. He's rating it at an eight on a ten scale. And time, well, we, we know that it started very suddenly, and it just started a few minutes ago. Okay. As he was taking a walk. Right. Anything else you want to know about the history? What okay. is medical history? Is, okay. I think so we're going to continue point. with the sample right. history. We've got A, doesn't have any allergies. He takes these medications. Right. What stands out for you? What kind of medications are those? Well, Hypertension. Cardiac meds, yeah, right. Okay, so hypertensive meds. For an impasse history, mm -hmm. it's right here. Okay. Is that consistent with his medications? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Good. There's his last oral intake All right. and events leading up to it. We kind of talked about that already. Okay. As far as the medications go, he tells you that he is intermittently compliant with those medications. He takes them most of the time. He took them today, but sometimes he forgets. Okay. So what are you looking for in a physical exam? Skin signs, uh, if he's got good radial pulses, uh, how well he's moving air, if there's okay. any like uh, labored breathing retractions, anything okay. like that, accessory mm -hmm. muscle use. Anything else? Well, this guy, we want to see if he's got bilateral uh, radial pulses too. Right. right. Good. Okay. So here's your first set of vitals. What stands out for you about those vitals? Increased respiratory rate. Mm -hmm. SATs are low. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah with oxygen. Getting, starting to get a little hypotensive, perhaps, yes. for a guy who has a history, history of hypertension. Exactly. Does he know if he took his medications today? He did, he did take his medications today, Okay. but he says he forgot the day before <coughs> and the day before that. Right. The heart rate would probably be consistent with the drugs he's on, not getting that tachycardia to support his circulatory status based on his meds, so you're not going to see a real high you, heart rate on him. Can you explain, elaborate that on a little bit? Uh, a little if he's on beta blockers, you're not likely to get that increased heart rate that is indicative of the fact that he's actually going into shock, so right. I think you'd have to rely more on what you're seeing in the skin signs. Okay. So as opposed to a patient who wasn't on a beta blocker, which might have a tachycardic rate with yeah. his, your findings, you're saying it's kind of low, it's in the 80s. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Next. Okay. Does that tell you anything? That's bad. Yeah. <laughs> What's bad about that? Well, diaphoresis is always bad. Yeah. It's okay. Potentially, it's potentially going into shock. So with the right. skin being pale and diaphoretic, you're, th you're starting to think shock. And we've already talked about the fact that he's not having a compensatory heart rate. Right. Well, well, just out of curiosity, will that make his shock worse, potentially? Well, he can't compensate right, for he can't it. Right. Can't so, compensate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it says all other exam findings are normal. So you were talking about checking pulses or blood pressures to see if there was any disparity. There is not. Everything else is normal. Okay. okay. Right. What else would you like along with your physical exam? Well, so we'll do a 12 lead so without right. any sort of... Uh, okay. Let's take a look at that 12 lead since you've asked for one already. Let's go ahead and take a look. And what do you see? Tell me about your findings on the 12 lead. Doesn't look to be any ST segment elevation anywhere. Okay. So. So does that rule anything out or give you some clues? Can potentially start to rule out a direct cardiac origin to it. Okay. So no ectopy. Okay. No ectopy at all. Yeah. Good. I don't see any. Mm -mm. So didn't then learn very much from this ECG? Yeah. Still need it though, just to make right. sure that we're yeah. on the right path. Rule out. Yeah. No. Oh, I agree. I think that's, yeah. that's a good way to go. So we've gotten some physical examination information, we've gotten some history, we've gotten the patient's chief complaint. Now's the time where we're starting to sort of filter those into what we think potentially might be the patient's issue. Okay. So give me some things that you think might be going on with this patient. If it didn't look so bad, you could go with, um, you know, that's a, a similar presentation to mm -hmm. kidney stones as well, which are more frequent in men. So you could have that as a potential. You wouldn't necessarily see all the signs of shock associated with it, however. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what other kind of things are you thinking about? I don't know. The tearing pin really leads me down the road of uh, the AAA. Right. Mm -hmm. um, right. It could be musculoskeletal, again, if there weren't the signs of shock. But right. Okay. I mean, you can think pancreatitis. You can right. take a whole bunch of itises. Right. Okay. Anything else? And let's kind of categorize this from either less likely to more likely, or we could think of from probability to possibility, things mm -hmm. that are very likely. So what do you think is the most likely at this point? I, I think most likely is definitely your aortic aneurysm. Okay. I agree. It's and it's the one that's going to do them the most harm if we don't deal with it. So mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think you're going you're gonna to do best by the patient to go down that road. And okay. consider other things that could potentially maybe your are, treatment's are there anything, going to be Is there that. anything else that you would put into that more likely category? Referred chest pain, if you want to get really far out sure. there. Sure. <laughs> okay. As far as more likely, I don't know. I mean, can we rule out trauma, recent trauma, or anything like that? We, right. we can't entirely rule it out, obviously, right. but he's not reporting any trauma, and he is A and O times four. Okay. okay. You know, cirrhosis, liver, you know, that, that sort of pain. Mm -hmm. but Does anybody think that, uh, like, cardiac tamponade might be a possibility? I think I'd be stretching on that yeah. one, but sure, yeah. Okay. Would you say that was I'd possibility, say probability? Possibility. Possible. A possibility. Yeah. I mean, do we have any, like, muffled heart sounds or anything like yeah. that? Okay. Well, that gives us some things to work with. Let's go ahead and look at some of those. So how about that MI? Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell me about what goes on with the myocardial infarction. What is the pathophysiology of a, of a myocardial infarction? You have an occlusion that's causing an area of the heart to get irritated and hypoxic. Mm -hmm. okay. What kind of presentations do we see with that usually? Generally chest, chest. pain or somewhere mm -hmm. around the chest pain depending on whether it's male or female. Mm -hmm. Could be a variety of signs and symptoms. Shortness on the of breath. Okay. Pain so chest pain as a result of a blockage to one of the arteries. Right. All right. So why would we think this was an MI? What are some reasons why this could be a myocardial infarction? He's got a history. He's got the hypertension. He's got coronary artery disease. Um, right. Skin signs are similar to what you may see with the chest pain as well. Mm -hmm. um, and what are some reasons why not? 12 lead. On our mark wall, 12 lead, yeah. Yeah, he's not complaining pain. of chest pain. He's not okay. complaining of radiating pain into his neck or his arm. Okay. So it would definitely be an atypical presentation for chest pain. Okay. Can we rule it out entirely? No. No. Okay. 
Do these look like good reasons why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some of what you said. So the other thing we'll look at is cardiac tamponade. So tell me about the pathophysiology of cardiac tamponade. What's going on to cause the symptoms? Uh, the pericardium becomes filled with fluid and uh, it inhibits the ability of the heart to pump effectively. Okay. Um, so what causes the symptoms is the heart being squeezed mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. the pericardium. The cardiac right. output's okay. just not there. Okay. Right. So what kind of symptoms would we then get as a result of that? Well, your blood pressure would generally tend to be different. Mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. pulse pressure would be... Very close together. Yeah. So narrowing pulse pressure? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. And what other symptoms? Usually, like you say, the muffled heart tones. Mm -hmm. okay. You'd be hearing some muffled heart tones. Okay. So what are some reasons why this could be a cardiac tamponade? He's hypoxic. You know, he's, he's sitting at 89% on room air. Mm -hmm. So you could have that. Sure. You know, he is, he's maybe starting to get hypotensive for a hypertensive yeah. patient. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, a history. systolic of 102 is... Okay. But did we see any narrowing of his pulse pressure? Was no. It close no. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, other reasons? Yeah, I think it's a... That's pretty much it. Kind okay. Of a stretch. What are some reasons why not? Why are we thinking, nah, not a cardiac tamponade? No narrowed pulse pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay. In a way, no mechanism. Right. Okay. So no, no mechanism of that. Um, although, can it happen spontaneously? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a result of an infection or a spontaneous. He didn't have a previous history of MI, though, did he? Because that think generally so. tends to be your more spontaneous. Wasn't listed. Cardiac mm. tamponade, so he doesn't have that. So still a probable, still a possibility, but. Right. Can you rule it out entirely? No. Okay. How about an aortic dissection? And this is the one that you guys picked as being the most probable. Right. Right. So yeah, he's got an area of weakness. So tell me about the pathophysiology holders. with an aortic dissection. That tearing feeling is, you know, tearing through the lumen of the of the vessel wall mm -hmm. is uh -huh. what he's feeling. So, so blood forcing its way in through the tunica intima into the tunica media. Media, mm -hmm. right, right. And starting to separate the vessel layers. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And anything else? We should know about pathophysi pathophysiology. What's causing the symptoms is the ripping of the tissue. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. How, what kind of pain do patients usually describe that as? Tearing. Tearing, Tearing. yeah. 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 I think we've covered that. That's the word you don't so want to So give me hear. some reasons why you think this is an arterial dissection. The tearing pain. Yeah, Sudden presentation, onset. right, mm -hmm. okay. right. With the poor skin signs, you know, with okay. the diaphoresis, so you know that whatever's going on, mm -hmm. you know, is fairly significant. He's diaphoretic, but we've, you know, we've ruled out a lot of the things that would lead you to believe that it's chest pain related or cardiac right. related, mm -hmm. so. That and the tearing word. Yeah. Okay. Decreased blood pressure. Um, yeah. Potentially, he's going into shock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's interesting for me is how you have tied back into all of his current signs and symptoms with this presentation. So you're really, I'm really seeing that that filtering process. So, any other reasons why it would be? His history has a lot to do with it, with the hypertension. Okay. Hypertension, mm -hmm. plus he has coronary artery disease. Right. So his right. intermittent compliance with his medications. Right. Okay. All right. Reasons why you think it's not. There's not a lot here to tell me that it's not. I mean, until we can otherwise rule it out, okay. which we can't do in the field. So Maybe him not having the differential blood pressure. Right. Right. But again, it's not enough, yeah, like you said, not enough to rule it out. He, Definitely he's got a history caution. of angina, and that could be causing the pain. And we're not seeing any 12-lead changes, which we sometimes do see with uh, asecting aneurysms, but not all the time. It just depends on the placement, where it is. Right. And if, it's, if it's in the ascending or the, you know, the arch of the aorta, we might see some ECG changes because it's blocking blood flow. Oh. If it's in the descending aorta, we probably wouldn't. Right. Right. Because it's far enough down that it's not affecting cardiac perfusion. Right. right. So, you want to make a diagnosis? What would your field diagnosis be? Rule out aortic aneurysm, mm -hmm. okay. aortic dissection. And how would you be then transporting this patient? 
Code, code three. three, closest okay. facility. Mm -hmm. Code three meaning lights and sirens yes. right. going yes. to the closest Sorry. facility. That yeah. can deal with this problem. Load and mm -hmm. go. Yeah. Uh, would it be a call where you'd feel a little nervous? I would definitely be ready to expect the potential. Mm -hmm. What is the potential? The potential is that, you know, if he completely dissects while you're transporting, you know, he's going to have a sudden significant drop of blood pressure. Mm -hmm. He's going to lose consciousness. Okay. You're eventually going to be dealing with a cardiac arrest. So tell me about the treatment you would provide for this patient in the back of the ambulance. Definitely uh, IVs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, but still not open them up because we don't want to increase the pressure in that right. area either. So we want to just make sure that we're able to handle it if that's what needs to happen. Okay. Yeah. I think Maintain. BLS shock treatment too. I mean, get them in Trendelenburg, um, get them some oxygen, right. keep them warm, right. drive okay. fast. Yep. But safely, of yeah. course. Yeah, right. <laughs> good. Now, would it, would it be of any value for us to give him more beta blockers if it were an option for us to control his heart rate, keep it down? Maybe with base contact. Mm -hmm. I, th I, th I think with base contact potentially. Right. Um, I think... Uh, that would definitely be something that I would want to consult with, depending on, you know, let somebody else review what his history is and how they intend to treat it when you arrive. Okay. Sounds good. Any questions? No.